and welcome to another in the ARM What Is program series. In each episode, we dive into a tech topic to give you insight and perspective into some of today's hottest design trends. I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief at ARM, and today we're going to find out what is an ASIC. And to help us with that, I want to introduce Rob Aiken, Fellow and Director of Research with ARM. When he's not helping us understand what is an ASIC, he's introducing his four grandchildren to the wonders of technology. So let's dive in. Rob, what exactly is an ASIC? An ASIC is an application-specific integrated circuit. So a chip that's designed to fulfill some particular purpose and solve some particular problem. So how does an ASIC differ from a standard off-the-shelf chip? The key really is in the application-specific part. It's doing something, usually it's doing something that an off-the-shelf part isn't going to do. Occasionally, it's not doing something that the application or that the, the general part does, but mostly it's trying to add some functionality that you just can't get in an off-the-shelf piece. Now, is an ASIC different from an SOC? Or are they the same thing? And if they're different, how are they different? That's, it's an excellent question. Historically, they were different, and now they're somewhat interchangeable. So historically, a system on chip was something that included a processor in addition to whatever other custom logic functionality. Nowadays, pretty much every ASIC includes an, a processor of some sort, so the, the terms are somewhat interchangeable. So, Rob, why do engineering teams choose to design with an ASIC rather than use standard chips? I think the key is really achieving some capability, some function they wouldn't be able to get with standard parts or with any other solution. That's the primary driver for using an ASIC. Secondarily, there are power and performance benefits that you usually get with a hardware solution versus something implemented in software or on a standard part. And finally, there's a cost benefit as well, that when you build enough of a given design, it's cheaper to do an ASIC than pretty much any other solution that's out there. Ah, okay. All right. You, well, you answered my next question. So let's talk about the past and the future. How have ASICs evolved over the years and how do you see them evolving in the near future? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question too. So the, the first ASIC that I worked on had 9,000 gates. And if you take that and put it in today's seven nanometer process, you could fit about 3,000 of those chips on one square millimeter of silicon. So it's, it's phenomenal what you can do. And effectively over the last 30 years, the ASICs have really evolved to take on more and more functionality so that they can do amazing things now. When you look to the future, there are really two competing trends that interact with each other. So the first is that it's becoming more and more expensive to do the initial startup for an ASIC. So in other words, to go through the design process to build the masks and to get the factory provisioning up and running to, to actually build the thing. Secondarily, however, it's also becoming increasingly easy to automatically implement them, to do large portions of the design in an automated fashion. And we've seen some of that recently with the latest announcements on automated floor planning and so on. So at, on the one hand, it's becoming easier and people, more and more people will be able to design ASICs. But on the other hand, the actual object is becoming more expensive. So I think there's this tension between the two is going to resolve itself one of two ways. Either there will be fewer ASICs because they'll be too expensive to make, or there will be more of them because the ease of design is going to supersede the, the cost of building them and that somehow or other people will figure out lower cost mechanisms for, for building them. And I think that's actually the one that's more likely to win, that we will see more application specific designs as people find more and more interesting problems to the, apply them to. Well, thanks so much, Rob. I think we know a lot more about ASICs now than we did just a few minutes ago. Check out all our other What Is episodes here and be sure to subscribe to this channel because we'll be adding more as the year progresses. Thanks for listening.